Right, okay. Time for some Wilson Launchpad. 75 quid a club. Something quite different than what I've certainly tested before, but could be an ideal partner for some average golfers out there. The way we're going to do this is quite simple. We're going to get straight out on the golf course at Conway Golf Club. I've got a full set of these to test. I'm going to play nine holes. And I'm back in here and I'll give you my opinion. Well, we might as well start this one right in at the deep end because uh, the wrapper's coming off. You might as well see my first uh, response. And I'm going to go eight iron, 34 degrees loft on the eight iron. And as you probably see, or uh, if not, in that far right hand corner is a 150 marker. Wind slightly off the left. First ever shot with an eight iron. I'm going to go through each iron because they all look slightly different in terms of address. It's a great high ball flight. It stayed down that left hand side. I was trying it a bit more of a cut shot on that. It didn't do that. So maybe there's restrictions in terms of moving the ball. But straight out the middle, high launching. Great start with the eight iron, straight out the wrapper. We'll play the next shot from where I just landed with that first eight iron. Like I said, pulled it a little bit maybe down this left hand side. Distance wise, probably not too bad to be honest with you. We'll see how that goes. And one of the things we'll look at throughout this sort of nine holes that I play. Well, one of the things that we'll look at out on the course is, uh, is how each club differs. And like I said, in sort of size and profile, and there's a noticeable difference. And when you get down to what I've got in my hand now, which is a pitching wedge, the whole back end, that bulbous back end that we've talked about a lot already in the description of the clubs, disappears. You cannot see it in this. You can't see it in the 9-9. And it starts to become visible in the 8. But at this stage, pitching wedge in hand, I can just about see a little bit of it uh, as I lean that club shaft a little bit forward that's an interesting one for me just a feel out of that is that going to hit the flag is it going to go in well it hit the flag and it fired out maybe a little bit I got that one a little bit um, well it bounced out the face to be fair but in terms of how it felt it was good feel it's going to be one of the things that we're going to have to have a look at when I play a few more of these shots is that down that short end of the bag when you're looking for a little bit more than just uh, ball flight power and all the rest of it, it's definitely going to be packed in, I think, to this top end. How are we going to get the feel around the shorter end in these sort of wedges and around the greens? They've got to say, first chip, that was quite impressive, you know. Well, there's going to be another wrapper off. Because I've not played, uh, well, not played with any of them, but uh, I took the wrapper off the pitch and went uh, halfway down the fairway. But we're on 9-9. Nine, nine. Uh, playing downwind, it's about uh, sort of... 145-ish to the flag. I'm not going to talk through every shot, but let's just see what this does in terms of... So what I'd be looking to try and do now is this is where you want to sort of uh, get that ball airborne, plenty of height on this, and a soft landing. Well, look at that ball flight. That's right at the flag, you know. That's right at the flag. Ooh. It's right at the flag, it just come up a little bit short. And looking at where I got it, it was kind of, uh, it was certainly off centre and low and toey. So that ball did quite well, to be honest with you. But uh, I can't believe, to be honest with you, I'll let me see if I can show you where I picked that up. I don't know when I'll get focus on that. Right down this uh, sort of toe end. And what's really impressive about that is if you, I don't know whether you did, if you can pick, I'll try and put a bit of a shot tracer on that one. Pick up ball flight, just see how high that ball launched off the club face in that low area there that's unreal what that's just done i'd have never guess that that just came out of that toe area i can't believe it's done that to be honest with you what a pickup that is that's 160 out it's uphill will it reach the top yes it has as well it's actually just going to camber down to that left-hand side. Uh, just missed it on the left-hand side. But what a ball flight that is. Unbelievable. I don't know if you can... It's a bit, a bit tingy off the sound there. But in terms of what it did, the ball absolutely flew. It's the best shot of it. We're three holes in now. I'm going to play a lot of these holes from varying different yardages throughout these holes. That was a six iron. 
so we can test every club that's in the bag and warmed up a little bit bit of a fuller swing and that's by far the best contact that i've put on the interesting thing was straight away there was the launch as the name suggests i suppose first question i want to ask as uh, at this stage of the video is in terms of the looks how many of you could gain this club based on its looks alone okay final test out on the course uh let's pinch somebody's tea is uh let's give this a bit of a belt five iron Longest iron, I think, that they do in terms of the set. Um, what you're expecting from the sheer mass of this club is to see balls absolutely zipping out there in terms of distance and yardage. And whilst they're not the most strongest lofted clubs that I've seen on the market, purely from visually in terms of the shape, I'm expecting some real distance. I've probably not seen any suggestion that they're anything uh, like powerhouses in terms of distance. We're going to hit five iron off this tee. At those three bunkers, shouldn't get there. That's a decent ball, you know. And it's dark, you ain't gonna pick it up. It's down that left hand side of the fairway, and it's done really, really well. Um, it's a real interesting one as to why I just keep getting slightly. If I showed you the club face again, and I will do at the end here to see where that is, all the marks on this club face are all down them bottom grooves. It's a real interesting one. Um, obviously down to my own performance, but again, I think it can only be very positive in terms of their performance because let's go, let's see if we can get that. Let's see if I can see the screen for a little while. Because otherwise I can't see if it's in focus or not. Can you get that? Come on, get off me. Get off me. Right all across these bottom grooves and that's been pretty much something that has happened on most irons that i've played and yet the performance has been a far more impressive than it should do out of them bottom grooves let me tell you superb out the rough I played three shots there and there was a reason for it. Just one final thing on these irons. That was eight irons, slightly into a bit of a breeze. And uh, what I like about it, and I found it a lot throughout and I'm not mentioned, is the, the distance control in terms of, it's not control's the wrong word, consistency. Because what I've seen with these clubs, often you'd expect, is the flyers. This will be a club that is criticized for that kind of thing. And uh, what I've just seen there with those three shots, they're virtually a yard to separate them all you know around the same sort of swing decent half decent contact and they've performed identical every one of them and that's been something that i've seen in every eye and that's a real positive Yeah, it's time for summary and uh, plenty of shots is out there. It was fantastic to try a set of clubs, literally from uh, short iron through to long iron. It gives you a much better feel for the overall performance of a set of clubs. So that was great to be able to do that. So thank you to Wilson for, uh, for sending me these. Um, where should we start? I think the big deal, um, the looks is a major thing. It's going to be a major thing in the decision making process because these are so different decision making in terms of buying these products they're so different than what we're used to having said that are they going to help high handicap golfers because i think that's a specific market these are aimed at the answer to that would be yes they will they're also priced incredibly well i think it's 75 quid an iron so it's, it's general sort of market price is 450 for six irons is what we're looking at so it's incredibly well priced the product is well built and it's got a good finish. Just talking about the finish, what I don't know is the back end, this graphite paint job that's on it, I would be, I would question clattering around in your bag 
sort of how they're going to mark up and scratch. I don't know. I've not seen that personally, but that would be a question mark that I would raise. Maybe people are playing these already, so comments down below if you've got these in the bag and if that's an issue. Going back to the looks element, like we've discussed in the video, top line is very, very bold, and obviously with the long irons in particular, you see that bulbous back end. If you can get your head around that, and it's like I said, it's it's almost like having a bag of hybrids in the in the bag. If you can get your head around that, and I think specifically more the higher handicap, certainly golfers who are looking for assistance with that low CG there is without doubt going to help launch, and you've seen that in the video on some of the shots I hit. That will benefit a lot of high handicap golfers who are struggling with that element of the game. That is no doubt whatsoever. So the market they're aimed at, it's a massive yes. The price point, a massive yes. The negatives for me on a personal level is just again the looks that I couldn't personally play that set of irons. But that's from a looks perspective and it's key. It inspires confidence in others in terms of that size of club head. It will do. For me, like I said, it didn't do it. The other one negative again to give a balanced opinion would be the sound of the club. It's a hollow body club and the sound was a little bit tinny at times. And I think that even from watching the video content back from out on the course, I could hear that uh, as a viewer. So maybe that's something you picked up on. But that would be a negative for me as well. But I think overall, like I said, a huge positive in terms of price point. Look good in terms of the finish, the quality of finish they've put together. And performance wise, I think for a beginner golfer, for a high handicap golfer, you'll get more enjoyment out of these than many other clubs that you could choose to buy for all the wrong reasons. So that's it, done. Great to get out on the course, like I said, where true testing, real testing takes place. Playing these things from a tee, from the fairway, from the rough, bit of chipping, bit of short game. That's the way to test clubs, so it was great to do that with these and be able to sit here now and give you a fair assessment on a Wilson Launchpad Irons. Right, as ever, thanks for watching. Thumbs up. Uh, I don't ask for this anymore. Hit the like, subscribe, do all them things. See you soon.